Matthew is a entrepreneur and personal development coach, and he's based in New York City. And um, I love the word entrepreneurial because I'm also an entrepreneur. Mm, yes, so, Matthew, tell us um, when you decided to go down the coaching path. Sure, be happy to. So I, I still think of myself as an outsider. Uh, to the coaching industry. It's been about a year now uh -huh. that okay. I've been focused on mm -hmm. the sector. Mm -hmm. And it's really the market characteristics that attracted me to coaching. The industry, as you know, is mm -hmm. growing very fast. Mm -hmm. um, it's also highly fragmented. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of uh, consumer confusion and friction. And I think it's an excellent time to start a company in the coaching industry today. So that was really the catalyst. Now, you do more than just coaching. Um, you know, we, we had a chance to talk ahead of time, and Matthew actually comes out of the fitness and wellness industry, and he was, he kind of paralleled that industry to the coaching industry. Um, so, tell us about the parallel yeah, that, so that you talked about. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, I, I look at um, coaching today uh, in the same way I looked at fitness and wellness 15, 16, 17 years ago. And how did you look at that then? Yeah, so um, yeah, I think it's a, I'm going to draw a picture because I think it's one of the best ways to... I've never had anyone draw a picture. Fantastic. We'll see how it comes <laughs> out for our viewers. So this is really how I spent um, most of my time in the fitness industry mm -hmm. over the past um, 17 years. So the research shows that when you look at the United States um, as it relates to fitness, you've got about 20% of the population um, considered to be a fitness enthusiast, right? Mm -hmm. These are folks who are exercising inside of gyms, outside, they're walking, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. biking, they're hiking. Uh -huh. the I don't fit into that category. <laughs> I go, but I don't fit into that enthusiast. <laughs> I understand. Um, Probably in the 80% that do it because they have to, or a percentage it. that do it because they know that it's good for them. Yeah, well, that's interesting because that's where I spent a lot of my time. Uh -huh. So let's look at the other end of the spectrum really quick. Um, so we'll call these folks, for this conversation, okay. fitness atheists, right? There's a, a, <laughs> there's a subset of the population that can exercise, right? It's old age, it's illness, it's mm, injury. Okay. But there's also a very large subset of this 20% that believes you're born with only so many heartbeats, and they're not going to waste one of them on fitness. <laughs> <laughs> I love that analogy. <laughs> so that's great. That leaves you with sixty percent. Right. And this is really where um, I spent my time, and I refer to the sixty percent as the sweet spot. These were individuals that um, knew they had to do something, mm -hmm. and even wanted to do something, mm -hmm. but they weren't quite sure. Um, where they should go, how they should get started. And I believed that with this population, if you made programs uh, accessible, convenient, affordable, fun, rewarding, that we'd be able to move this 60% to the 20% fitness enthusiast and grow that population. Mm -hmm. And we chose to focus on this population through corporations, mm -hmm. um, mainly large national mm -hmm. employers mm -hmm. that offered fitness programs to their employees as part of their benefits package. So similar to health insurance, mm -hmm. dental mm -hmm. insurance, mm -hmm. a retirement plan, mm -hmm. we've got companies that are now providing fitness and wellness programs to their employees. So would that mean um, they would give a certain amount of money towards a gym? Correct like Equinox or New York Sports and you know there's many of them Correct. in the city. Correct. Yeah, we and uh -huh. and and we were in all major uh -huh. cities in okay. all 50 states. Mm -hmm. We had about 10,000 gyms mm -hmm. where we brokered memberships uh -huh. okay. uh, for companies. Mm -hmm. And the reason I I share this with you is because it's very similar uh, to what I'm hoping to accomplish in the coaching industry. So, the way we view the coaching industry uh, similar to fitness, looking uh, mm -hmm. for this conversation mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. United mm -hmm. States. The research shows, once again, you have three segments of population. Now, in the coaching industry, you have 18% that we'll call flourishing. 
these are folks who are engaged, they're fulfilled, mm -hmm. um, things are going really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got 17%, we'll call these folks languishing, right? And there are um, certain industries and people that cater to this 17%. I'm more interested, once again, in the larger population, mm -hmm. the 65%, so two-thirds of the population almost, that once again are interested in being fulfilled, interested in being engaged, but not quite sure how to go about doing it. And I think the coaching industry has a tremendous opportunity um, to work with this segment of the population and once again make things more affordable and accessible and convenient, removing a lot of the friction that I see that exists mm -hmm. today. And from the conversations that we've been having uh, around the coaching industry today, um, companies are eager to offer programs, benefits to their employees that are going to be useful, that will help them, not just at work, but also at home. So, um, at meaning they, they would offer coaches, they would offer Here's X dollars for a six-month program, both of the above. Yeah, I think it can be any and all. I think mm -hmm. that right now um, companies have moved from what we'll call traditional benefits to more mm -hmm. work-life benefits. Um, uh -huh, and they're okay. looking for ways to support their employees. And I think employees, their expectation um, has also grown where they expect now to get these types of programs through their companies. And um, as you know, um, coaching for many <laughs> years and working with companies and CEOs and executives, that the everyday employee, the line staff, mm -hmm. managers, supervisors, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't necessarily get access right. to these coaches. That's true. That's true. Um, and I'd like to democratize coaching, making it um, affordable and accessible so that people can take advantage of it. When you say people can take advantage of it, is there a stopgap at the the employees that are somewhere down here. You know, th there's a wide chasm yep. between the employer E down here and the CEO and the C-suite people. Yep. You know, um, do we offer that to everybody, no matter where they are on the food chain, yeah, I if think, you will? I think that's the goal. I think that's the goal, mm -hmm. and I think... Um, if we could change the way people, one, think about coaching, but two, access coaching, there's mm -hmm. really an opportunity to aggregate a lot of demand and provide coaching to help them with their life. And, and maybe it's career advancement mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um, organizational development, but maybe it's also something uh, in their personal life. Maybe it's uh, a hobby they're working on or relationships that they would like to cultivate. It, it, it would appear to me that um, companies that offer, like they did with the fitness, with coaching, if companies have employees that are healthy, I believe their health benefits go down. Yeah, very um, true. You know, compared to, uh, to companies that have um, employees that are smokers mm -hmm. or um, have so much stress they get sick a lot or are overweight. Yeah. You know, I think more and more companies, because health benefits are so expensive, that it would seem, it would seem that having fitness programs, having coaching would help them as a company sure. with, with um, you know, their own health benefits. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And we found there's, there's really two sets of data that... Um, companies are no longer arguing, right? There's just so much research around people being happy. And when they're happy, when they're more fulfilled, they are more productive mm -hmm. while at work, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. companies have uh, a selfish interest oh, in absolutely. having their employees mm -hmm. be happy. The other set of data that's also very interesting is there's a direct correlation in employees and how they feel about their benefits 
and how they feel about the overall company. Mm -hmm. So when they're satisfied mm -hmm. with their benefits package, they mm -hmm. tend to be more satisfied mm -hmm. with their company. Mm -hmm. They're more engaged, mm -hmm. they're more involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this is data that um, is widely accepted now by companies. So the time is ripe. It's a good time. Uh, when you say accepted by companies, we, is there a specific niche of companies? Um, are we talking Fortune 500 companies? Are we talking Wall Street? <laughs> That's a, it's, an, it's an excellent question. Um, I will say that uh, all companies aren't created equal. Um, some companies are more progressive than others. Okay. Uh, certainly there are companies in the tech sector names that you're probably mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. familiar mm -hmm. with, uh, Google right. and right. Apple, oh, and, yeah, and they're going yeah. out of their way uh -huh. to really offer mm -hmm. top-notch mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm. However, um, there are also, um, you know, I'll call them sort of very old, um, you know, historical type companies, mm -hmm. non-tech, mm -hmm. um, been mm -hmm. around for a really mm -hmm. long time. Hotels, for example. Um, Omni Hotels is the number one company as it relates to mindfulness right now, which is really interesting. It's not something that you would think about, but they're bringing people into the company uh, to teach mindful practices so to their employees. Meditation and yeah. um, very interesting. Yeah, so there are a lot of different companies, That's and you're right, some companies are are more interested than others. <laughs> um, and, and that's great. That is really wonderful. Um, because, you know, as we, as we know and as we find out, that if you've got employees that are productive and mm. happy, they are more productive and fulfilled and effective in the companies, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, very much. Um, so that, that's great. So um, are you taking some of the structure from the wellness fitness and bringing that to this or is you know you wipe the slate clean and you're starting over yeah so I think it's a it's a, a very good question um, we're, we're gonna start clean right mm -hmm. with with mm -hmm. a, a clean slate I would say that there are um, some things that we did uh, very successfully as it mm -hmm. relates to the work we did within companies that mm -hmm. are transferable mm -hmm. uh, to this new business. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we're, we're wide open. We're looking at everything. We've been, as I shared with you before the show started, um, really collecting some very interesting data. Um, the mm -hmm. industry has um, very solid data around, uh, I'll call them mega trends, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, you know, revenue and coach sentiments mm -hmm. and insights, mm -hmm. but there's not a tremendous amount of data that we've found around consumer insights and how they feel about coaches. So um, we've been spending a lot of time uh, in different coffee houses mm -hmm. and in parks mm -hmm. meeting with strangers everyday people uh -huh. and, and asking them uh, how they viewed coaching, what they thought about coaching. And uh, it's been very interesting uh -huh. and enlightening. Mm, I can imagine. And we're using a lot of that data uh -huh. to drive our, our product. Great. How many people that you speak to say coaching, what's coaching, and oh, is that basketball coaching, <laughs> little league Because that's how it used to be. Uh. You know, when you said you were a coach, they would say, are you a little league uh, basketball, football? You know, back then, you know, coaching was new, and it still is relatively a new, yeah. a new area. Um, it's surprising that so many, that I wouldn't say so many, there are people that don't know what coaching is. Because it's everywhere. If you look at the Times, if you look at magazines, if you look at TV, there's invariably always an article <laughs> around coaching. Yeah. And that's what's so exciting to me. So as it relates to the consumer uh, data and feedback, mm. you're right. Things haven't changed a whole lot. Mm. They're still asking, what's coaching? Mm. What we've done is is we've segmented uh, the consumer population into two groups. Mm -hmm. We have those who have never been coached before, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot of what we're talking about uh -huh. right now, mm -hmm. and those who have been coached. Uh, so we'll start with the folks who have never been coached. Mm. Uh, the typical feedback is um, one uh, they're dubious of the profession 
Um, and maybe some of that is uh, education around what coaching really is, mm -hmm. how it's mm -hmm. de delivered. Mm -hmm. um, but we also hear a lot of feedback around coaching qualifications and what makes somebody a good coach mm -hmm. and how are they able to spot a good coach from a bad coach. So we hear that a lot. Uh, the other feedback we hear is around the cost. It's, uh, it's a very high cost. People view it as mm -hmm. uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. And I think largely they're aware that it exists. And I think the preconceived notion is that it's for celebrities, it's for athletes, mm. it's for CEOs. Not the CEOs. everyday person. Correct. Mm. It's, um, you know, it's really interesting. Um, and that when people think about themselves and wellness, like joining a gym, um, oh, I'm not going to join a gym, it's too expensive. Mm. Um, or coaching, it sounds great for someone else, but it's prohibitive. Um, I, I, I like to call those kind of stories <laughs> that we all have, um, you know, fitness because they know they're not going to do it, mm -hmm. um, so they immediately go to a price tag. Mm -hmm. You know, the same thing with coaching. Yeah. Um, coaching, not because I'm a coach and I've been a coach for uh, my 11th year and I love the profession, everybody could get something from coaching, yeah. but it's all about self-exploration, and I think that scares people in a way. Yeah, you I know, agree with that. It's, it's the same thing if you're talking about therapy. Mm -hmm. People don't know what therapy really is, and you know, they think there's something and they want to go try to figure it out, but until they get there... They, they, they don't know what it is. Oh, it's about finding out about myself. And I think coaching is the same thing. They know it's finding out about themselves. Um, but I, it, it depends on how much they want to really move that needle to w where they want to go. You know, it's the uh, WIIFM, what's in it for me. Um, so thoughts? Yeah, so I think, um, so I agree with everything that you said. <laughs> I think that we are at a time um, where in the developed world, the developed countries, um, we've largely satisfied our need for survival and socialization, and there now is a quest for fulfillment and mm -hmm. self-actualization. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, you're right in that that requires some discovery mm -hmm. and some exploration about oneself, mm -hmm. and that can be scary. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that uh, the demand is there, and I would point to, um, as an example, um, bookstores, right? The self-help um, aisles are in every section of a bookstore, mm -hmm. including um, the kids section. And what I would say uh -huh. around um, self-help books, um, they're great, I read them, I recommend mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. but I think they, they lack the one-to-one -one customization right. that comes with of a course. coaching mm -hmm. engagement. Right. And I like to say that uh, a good coach is better than a barrel full of books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people say, well, I can pick up a self-help book, but that's general. That only talks about generalizations. It doesn't get into the person. And again, that's another way for somebody to disconnect mm -hmm. from them having to do the work themselves. Um, you know, a lot of people live in comfort zones. If if it's not broken, I don't you know I don't need to go there until they come up against a possibility of a promotion or something happens in their life yeah. where it stops them dead in their tracks and they say oh my god you know I, I probably could use a little help and then it's doing the work yeah. so they want to do the work you know? yeah. and it does require work um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. and and I find that the the work really begins outside of the coaching session, 
Right. What you do in the mm-hmm. coaching mm-hmm. session mm-hmm. is is really about discovery and mm-hmm. planning, mm-hmm. but you still have to execute. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the execution doesn't happen in the, in the coaching right. session. Exactly. It happens outside out of the, the session. Out in the world. I'll yeah. never forget uh, a friend of ours. I, I wouldn't say they're sophisticated, but they've traveled a lot. When I said I was going into coaching and that I was going to coach, she said, why do people need coaching? Can't they figure it out themselves? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, it's like, whoa. We hear a lot of that from it's consumers that have never been coached before. However, when we talk to people who have been coached, oh, yeah. we hear three things on a regular mm-hmm. basis. One is they reached their desired result, mm-hmm. so coaching Hopefully. equaled mm-hmm. success mm-hmm. for Absolutely. the most of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the the second thing that we hear is that they would absolutely use it again. Mm-hmm. Some of them mm-hmm. already are, mm-hmm. and it's not just for times of crisis, mm-hmm. right? Things mm-hmm. can be okay, and you can work to make them mm-hmm. better, mm-hmm. even great, mm-hmm. right? You can mm-hmm. move from good to great. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing we hear that I think is very promising and makes me excited about the future of the industry is that they would recommend coaching to a friend or to a family mm-hmm. member. Mm-hmm. So while most people are not open to it today, um, the people who have experienced it largely are, and they're recommending it, and they're using it. So I think that it's getting more people involved, and... Yeah, and that's always wonderful to hear. I mean, I get a lot of repeat business, meaning people that have worked with me, they've taken a break, and something's come up, and they've come back. Yeah. So that's that's always nice, um, but, you know, it would be great if more people's minds were open and maybe with with what you're doing and what ICF is doing in promoting coaching yeah. and that's what this week is about is really going out and making people aware of of coaching and what it is and you know what it isn't yeah agreed and i also yeah. think that making it more accessible making it more affordable um, creates a lot of opportunity and um, you know, I shared with you one of the things that we're doing right now is we are um, creating a, a, a curated team of coaches mm. that we're going to make available to companies for their employees. And when you have a particular mm-hmm. coach in a specific mm-hmm. area, mm-hmm. you'll also have access to an entire team of coach. And rather than paying what you would normally pay, mm-hmm. which is you know two hundred right. to three hundred and fifty dollars mm-hmm. an hour mm-hmm. in many mm-hmm. cases. Um, you you join like you would a gym. It's a monthly membership, uh-huh. and you simply have access to a team of coaches while you're paying your membership. And so access to a team of coaches, what yeah. does that mean? Yeah, so um, we're, we're actually doing a, a lot of... Um, tech work right now building out a platform where consumers would be able to come to a website um, Mm -hmm. based on uh, a a very sort of basic Mm -hmm. set of Mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. There'll be an algorithm Mm -hmm. that will be able to match you up Mm -hmm. with, um, we'll call it two or three different coaches Mm -hmm. that might be a really good fit for that individual. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to learn all about their coaches, Uh their certifications, their Uh credentials, but you'll also be able to see their calendar, Mm -hmm. their availability. You'll be able to book the time. be able to book the session so all the economics would remain on the platform as well. So you'd pick one coach, you wouldn't be working with two or three? Correct. You oh. would you would pick okay. one coach mm-hmm. initially, but based on the goals of the client, they may have a need for other coaches. And when they pay their membership, they have access to all of the coaches. So one month they may be receiving coaching services in um, organizational development, mm-hmm. right? It's something okay. that they're focusing mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, maybe the next month they have something in their personal life. Maybe it's relationships, maybe it's communication. And they would go to another coach for that? Yeah, they how, would have how access. Would, how would that work? I mean, we, um, meaning that you'd have a kind of a smorgasbord of, of coaches that you don't really connect with one person and stay with one person if you've got one for this and one for that. You know, it's like having a team. 
Yeah. Yeah, they really do have a team, but they're also able to stick with one coach if they've built the rapport uh -huh. and they're okay. making progress and they want to stay with that coach. Uh, for other areas in their life, they can certainly do that. Okay. Um, but what we've found is that um, it's important to people to be matched up with coaches that have experience in very specific areas of life or work that they want to focus on, and we're going to give them the ability to do that. That's... Uh so you have one from column A and one from column B and maybe one from column C yeah, if so, they want. Yeah, and, and right That's now we're, we're pulling a, a lot of coaches uh, here in New York mm -hmm. City from NYU mm -hmm. and from Columbia. Uh -huh. um, and there'll be other schools as well around the country that we'll pull from. Um, but we're really excited about it and we think uh, it's a great opportunity and, and the market characteristics lend itself to uh, creating a sustainable and mm -hmm. profitable company that does a lot of good. And do you have a website? Uh, so we're actually testing a couple of different names uh -huh. right now. Okay. So we have a couple of names. Uh, Choose Your Own Coach is one of the names. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't decided um, on a specific name yet. We're going to let the market um, tell us which name mm -hmm. they like best. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a lot of surveys and consumer insights as we speak, actually. We have Great. people out talking with folks. So before we leave, because we're almost done, believe oh, it or boy, not. Oh, boy, that happens. So uh, <laughs> I know. Um, would you like to give your website? Uh, sure. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give the email address uh, as well as the website. It's chooseyourowncoach.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have any questions or any interest, uh, you can email me at matthew at chooseyourowncoach.com. Um, and we'll be sharing more information as it's available. Well, this has been great. Believe it or not, we're almost out of time. I can't believe how quickly it's gone. So I want to say thank you for being my guest tonight. It's been really fun and very engaging and informative. Thank you, Terry. It's been a pleasure, and I really appreciate you having me. You're very welcome, and good night. Thank we'll, you. Uh, good night. Hopefully see you next week.